Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Unity 3D platformer tutorial series. Now we've set up the basics of our camera movements as we move around to the world. We've got our player able to move around, we can look to we can look up a certain amount, we can look down a certain amount, and our camera doesn't flip around all over the place, and our player is able to wander around in every direction possible. So now that we have all that basic stuff set up, the next thing we do is actually to replace our little capsule collider object we have here with a real player model that we're going to use in the game. So if I just stop this here, uh, if you look in the description down below this video, there'll be a link to um, some files that we have down that we have that we're going to use throughout the series. And in that folder, there or in that zip file, there will be a player folder. And if you go into that player folder and then copy uh, the character dot blend that we have here. If we go into our assets folder in our project, so into our main assets folder, we're going to create a new folder that we're going to call, uh, we'll call this player actually. We'll call it player. And we're going to drag all three of these folders into there, like this. It'll take a second or two to copy all the various bits in. And we'll see we have a character here that we can use in our game. So what we can do straight away is just click and drag this character and drop it into the world and you'll see it comes in as a big massive gigantic character and we actually want to use a different um, texture on the character than what is set up to start off with so I'm going to change it so that our character guy here if we if we go into our texture folder If we go into our materials folder, which gets automatically generated when you bring in an object. So you'll, you'll see back in our folder of stuff here, we had a character blend, we had a texture and an animation. So here we have a character, we have the texture folder, we have an animation folder, but we also have this materials folder. So this gets automatically generated when you bring in a 3D object like this. And it's already been assigned because it's a, a blender object, so we don't have to mess around with uh, changing anything crazy too much. But what we do want to do is give our uh, special texture to this guy that we've created for this series. So if I go to our textures folder, if I just get number four here, I'm going to click and drag this into the materials folder like this. And then here we're going to get the number four texture and we're going to drag it into this, the box here beside albedo. And that'll give us basically a new texture that we're going to use for our player which is a, a little bit more optimized for what we're doing. So our player is gigantic within our world. I'm rotating the view here just in case anyone doesn't know the basic controls. If you hold Alt and then click and drag, you can spin your character around like this. And we can also move around by clicking the middle of the mouse button to move us around within the world. Or we can switch to our hand view here and click and drag and we can still Alt and rotate around like that. So within the 3D world, it's kind of a different way of moving things around, but that's okay. So our guy is way too big, obviously. So we need to shrink him down so he fits inside our little collider here. So what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to make a child, this, this new character object, we're going to make a child of the player that we already had. So we had our player here. We had the character, big main object. So we're going to click and drag the character on top of the player like that. We're going to set all his position stuff to be at zero so he's at the the center of the object but he, he's a little bit above the player uh, or above the ground at the moment but we'll sort that out in a second in fact we'll just do that now we'll just set the y value to be minus one like that and now we're going to shrink down the scale of him so let's try put him at say let's try point one so all three sides we're going to set the point one and if we just move him out of the box and zoom back in on him Maybe that's a little bit small. He's a little bit too small compared to the thing. So let's try 0 0.15. 0 0.15, 0 0.15. There you go. That's perfectly fine. So he's a little bit taller than the collision object that we're going to use. But that's fine. It's okay for the player to be a little bit taller. So you have a bit of, a bit of play around. So like when the player jumps and hits his head, it's okay to be a little bit taller than what this is. So that's fine. So let's then... Um, move our character back into the middle so we'll set our z value back to be zero so you're right in the middle of our blue uh, capsule and then what we want to do is make sure we get rid of that blue capsule because at the moment 
all that's doing is getting the way of what we can see so let's go back to our player and we're going to turn off the mesh renderer so there you go so now you can see we still have the outline of our player or of the collision which is the the green lines we can see and that's basically how our player is going to bump against walls and stuff like that because while we could use the exact shape of the player uh, you're just making it more complicated and it the collider box doesn't need to be anywhere near as complicated as what the player actually looks like we want to use a very simplified collider because it makes things easy on unity and the processing that the computer has to do on your game is much more simplified and it, it's it's more straightforward we don't we don't need it to be super duper complicated you don't need to know where his hand is exactly touching the environment because all we really need to know is is the player on the ground yeah is the player kind of roughly bumping up against the wall yes or no we don't need to know exactly that he's pumping bumping uh, exactly against the wall with his his hand or his elbow or anything like that so now we have our character in place if we go ahead and play the game we can see we can move around and the character spins around with us and faces different directions but of course we want our character to actually do some stuff so you can also see that our character is very very slightly above the ground just because of how our um, our capsule collider is set up so if I just uh, pause the game for a second so I can hit escape and then just pause the game we can see oh no I don't want to zoom in on that let's uh, let's zoom into our player in the scene view here if we zoom in here you can see our player is just floating above the ground and so is the capsule collider itself and that's because of if we click on the character controller over here the skin width is set up to a default value of 0 0.08 so what we can do, we have two different options. We can either move the character down, or we can change the skin width to be... Uh, if we set it to zero, it'll automatically go to 0 0.0001. Now if we unpause the game, we'll see the player drops down right to the ground. So we need to remember to set that in our normal view, not just when we're running the game. So let's stop the game running, go back to our player, make sure we have the player highlighted, and then change the skin width again. We just set it to zero. And then it'll set it to the lowest possible value, basically, that the skin width can be. So now we know our player will actually look like he's on the ground. So that's all fine. We have our player in the world. But as you saw when we were moving around there, it doesn't look great having our player just uh, waving his arms around and kind of or with his arms out to the side, running around in a static pose like that. So this pose where that he's standing in at the moment, this is generally called a T-pose. And that's usually the default animation state for a model in a game in general. But we want our model to actually have some real animation. So I'm going to click on the character here. He's already got an animator assigned to him. So if we go to Window and Animator here, we can look at our animator, but there's not actually anything going on. This is just a default setup this, that we have on this character. If we go to Window and Animation here and click it down here, there's not actually anim any animations applied to the character just yet. So we want to go ahead and add some animations to him. And animating the character in 3D is not too complicated. It's pretty simple, especially when the model is set up nicely, which this one uh, comes set up for us. So if we have our character selected here and go to Create, and we're going to create a new animation. So in the Player folder here, so we're going to navigate to within Assets. So Assets, Player. We're going to do... Um, there's already an Animations folder but we want to set up a different specific animation. So we're going to say um, player animations. So these are the animations that we're using specifically on our player. And we're going to create a player underscore idle animation. So we'll save this. And if we go to that folder now, we have the animation that we just created. And also we have an animator added by default called the character animator. So to animate our character, Basically, it takes as long as you want to put into animating your character. So, say for example, our character starts off in um, this position here. We, we don't really want our character to start off in this position. Uh, what we would really want him to start off is like posed and ready and standing. So, let's for example, very quickly, we're going to turn the record button on so that any changes we make will be stored by the, the um, character. Or stored by the animator, sorry. So what we'll do is overall we'll move the whole character down slightly. So if we
drop down the character here, we can go into the armature, which is the which is what controls where the character is. And we're going to grab the main point and drag it down slightly. Then we're going to drop into the main and go into bone here and then leg left and leg right. So leg right, we're going to rotate this slightly forward, like uh, kind of like that. Leg left, we're going to rotate it back like that. Um, actually, you know, we'll put leg left a tiny bit forward and then leg right. We're going to go into leg right like this. And if we go to the next level of leg right, we're kind of this is the knee essentially of the leg. So we can bend that down like that. And then his foot, we'll make his foot kind of tap forward like that. And we'll do the exact same thing with the left leg now. So we moved the leg where it joins the hip. Now we're going to move the leg where it joins the knee. So we'll move it kind of back like that. And then we're going to move the foot. Oh, I clicked on the wrong part there. You want to click on the wire. If you click on the, say, the middle of the sphere, you'll end up rotating it around like that. We want to make sure we hit the, the central kind of wire points like this. So you see his foot is kind of in the ground. Again, what you need to do is mess around with these values until you get something that looks decent. So you just keep messing around until you get a pose that looks kind of good. So that's his legs sorted out. So let's go into his chest and his shoulders. So on his arms, let's rotate his ar this arm forward like this and maybe make it go like this. And then his elbow will bend it up and bend it in and then his hand we can rotate his hand in like that so we'll do the same on his left arm we'll make his left arm kind of bend back like this and forward like that and in and then his hand I don't know can go in as well so as you can see he starts off and he's then in this kind of little pose here it's not the best pose. It's something that I just threw together. You just saw in like a minute or two. You need to spend time working on your animations. Um, now this isn't going to be an animation tutorial series. Like doing this kind of stuff takes time. Um, but just as an example then. So that's his start little pose that he has. But we want him to maybe say. We want his animation to make. He'd want to be like I don't know. Bobbing up and down or something like that. So to do animation going forward. What you do is move the timeline forward. Uh, to another position. Let's say if we go to 30 here, what that means is at the moment we're running at 60 frames of animation. So 30 here is basically half a second. So if we go all the way up to 60, this is 60 frames of animation, that is one second here. So let's just go to like halfway through. And we could say at this point, okay, move his left arm. We would have his left arm go up to there. And then when it gets to one second, we'll put it, we'll pull it back down to here. So if we were to go to play the animation now, you can see his arm would be just moving back and forward like that. So that's all fine and dandy. Like I said, you need to spend time on your animations, putting all these th things together. But we're not going to spend all these videos setting up these animations. If you want to work on your idle animation for your player, you perfectly can. And we'll work in some other animations as well. But for our purposes, we want to keep it nice and simple and straightforward. And with this player model, if we go back to the player model here and click on the character in the hierarchy, it already has a bunch of animations set up for us to use, which is really handy and really straightforward. So if we click on the idle animation here, you can see it's got all this stuff already set up. Um, I think if we pre we can't press play because it's not actually assigned to the to the player model at all. But what we can do is select it all so just click on one of the diamonds and then hit Control and a and then Control and c and let's go back to our player so we we put our animation on our character model here so what we can do is go back into here select everything that we already have and just delete that because that's not exactly perfect and then we can just hit Control and v and it'll put in all this animation for us so we can hit play and we've got this simple little animation of the player kind of just bobbing up and down. But that's not the most kind of interesting animation. So let's take a look at the other idle animation, which is idle 2. You can see if you look at it here, already it looks more complicated than what we just saw a second ago. So let's control and A again, control and C, go back to our character, 
go back into our player idle animation that we have selected by default then we're going to hit Control and A delete all the ones there make sure that our timeline is back at the start and then hit Control and V and I'll copy it all in and look you can see we're already in a more interesting looking pose let's hit play and you can see as an idle animation our player is just kind of standing there uh, bouncing up and down which is perfect that's a handy little animation for us to use so let's unplay and we'll, we'll leave preview on so that's our little idle animation let's set up another quick animation we're going to say create new clip and this will be player run like this so we can go down to the list of animations that's already included with the player and we have a run animation here so let's grab this one so we'll hit control and a control and c uh, or if you're on a Mac of course it's uh, options A and option C uh, but let's switch back to our character go to the player run animation make sure we're at zero on the timeline and then hit control and V and now we've got we've got this run animation but you can see there's a weird little thing happening at one point here um, I think it's just because of the way this this run is set up so what we need to do is find out where this weird flicker is happening so if we stop our animation run and drag to our timeline you can see the leg goes up and then whoo it flicks back really fast and then flicks forward so you can see our leg goes to here and then all of a sudden it flicks back to this really far point and then flicks forward and it's because there's a, a weird extra keyframe added into the list that shouldn't be I don't, I don't know why it's just part of this setup it, it's, it's a little bit weird so what we know it's happening if we look it's on the left leg and it's happening at this point in time so that means there's a keyframe on the left leg that's in the wrong place so what we can do is scroll down to our lift our list here sorry and you can see our left leg uh, which is at this point up here and the rotation of it at this point in time this little keyframe here is what's making this weird animation happen so if we just click off all the rest of them for a second and just highlight this one particular frame and just hit delete now if we scroll back to our time you can see the leg goes up nicely the way it shows and then comes back perfectly like that so there's that one little error we need to correct and fix but now if we hit play we've got this perfectly smooth uh, nicely animated run animation so we've got one more animation that we want to add for the time being so we're going to create another new clip and go to player jump is what we're going to call this one and again we're going to take a look at our animations over here we're going to grab this jump animation we're going to hit control and a copy all this go back to our character again go to the player jump animation hit control and v and you'll see we we get this nice little jump animation for when a player jumps we it's like the player puts his arms down by the side and then jumps so we've got those three animations in place for us now but of course at the moment if we were to hit play because the first animation we made was the idle animation our player will stay in this idle animation so we can run around all over the place to our heart's content but the player won't actually change what he's doing on the screen so we need to be able to tell uh, unity when to switch between animations so if we stop this running here the way we do that is using the animator window which I already opened earlier but if you didn't open it with us just go to window and animator here and in that you'll see here's the three animations we just set up on our character so by default the player idle which was the first animation that was set up to be the default starting animation so you can see it goes from entry which is when the game starts running basically it goes straight away over to player idle so what we want to do is say okay when our player starts moving we want him to be running around and when our player isn't on the ground we want him to be in the jump animation so to do that we'll need a couple of parameters so we'll go to parameters here and we'll just hit the plus and go to float and this will be our speed value and we're going to hit plus again and use bool and this will be we'll say is grounded and all we do to set up these animations we go from player idle we right click on it say make transition and then click on player run 
and then this little arrow that we have between them we want to turn off has exit time because has exit time will basically say after a certain amount of time in this animation go to this animation we don't want to do that we want it to happen whenever we um whenever we start moving basically so under settings here we can leave all this stuff the same we'll turn off fixed duration but we'll have here under conditions we're going to hit the plus symbol and we're going to say when our speed is greater than 0.1 so basically what as soon as our player starts moving switch to the run animation and then when our when player stops running we're going to go make transition back the other way we'll turn off exit time again and fix duration and this time we'll say when speed is less than 0.1 then turn back to the player idle animation and then when we want our player to jump in the air well we can go from player idle to jumping and all we do for that is when is grounded is false so basically when we're no longer on the ground we'll jump up in the air and again we'll turn off exit time and duration like that we'll do the same thing coming from the run because we want to be able to jump whether we're on the ground or running so we'll turn off these bits set is grounded false and then when we're jumping we'll make the transition back to player idle and when we're to do that we'll say okay if we're on the ground go back to being idle but also if we're on the ground check and see if our speed is uh, less than 0.1 so if our less is 0.1 and we're on the ground well then that means go back to the idle animation we'll turn off these things again otherwise we also want to check and see if we are on the ground and our speed is greater than 0.1 so if we're going faster than 0.1 well then just transition straight to the run animation from the jump otherwise transition to the idle animation from the jump uh, turn these off as well and then the only thing left to do is to actually be able to tell unity how these things are working so if we hit play at the moment although we set up these animations you can see at the moment the player is just getting stuck in player jump because by default our is grounded value here is turned to false so by default as far as the player knows he's always not grounded uh, so he's just stuck in this jump animation the whole time which is okay if we decide to keep ju jumping around with him but we really don't want that so we need to use a way to tell that or a way to tell unity how we are uh, or what state we're currently in basically we need to set our speed value and our is grounded value and we're going to do that through the player controller script so we'll open up the player controller script we need to create a reference to the animator object which is on our character if we look at the character here we have the animator object and this is what controls which animation should be playing so we can go here and say public animator and we'll just call it anim and then all we have to do down at the end of our update loop here we're going to say anim dot set bool and we're going to set the is grounded bool which is what we're calling this bool here which is determining whether we're on the ground we're going to set that the way, the way we use set bool here is we tell it what bool we want to set and then we give it a value so we say is grounded then comma and then we want to give it a value and the value we want to give it is whether the controller is grounded at the moment so we already know we can get that value so we can just say controller dot is grounded so if the co controller is grounded then we can set the animation bool there so let's test that out we can go back in here hit play uh, once it's compiled there we go so oh we actually we didn't assign that to the player so we'll go back to where our player script is we need to assign the animator which is on our character so we'll click and drag character into the animator slot we'll hit play again and now we can see our player is just in the idle animation but if we jump we switch to jumping like that so we jump nice and simple nice and straightforward so let's go back in here the only thing left to do is get our speed sorted out so our speed you can do anim dot set float speed 
And what value are we going to use for speed? Well, basically, we're going to use whether we're taking in any input at the moment. So we'll use, instead of uh, taking from our move direction, which can change um, depending on which way we're facing and stuff like that, we're just going to say, just check and see if there's any input happening at the moment. So we're going to say, um, speed will be, let, let's put it between some brackets here, and we're going to say matf.absolute, so that we get the absolute value on, say, the input.getAxis uh, vertical. So that's, if we get any input up or down, it'll say that this value is one. So vertical can be one for pressing up or minus one for pressing down. And matf.abs basically says that value, just make that uh, a full number value basically chops off whether it's plus or minus and just says okay that is a plus number so we have the matf.abs then we also want to say again matf.abs for absolute we want to take the instead of the vertical axis this time we'll go for input.getAxis horizontal like that and then we want to make sure that our brackets are balanced. Uh, we haven't got enough brackets here, so we need one more bracket. And then we hit our semicolon. And this way it'll say, okay, whether we're pressing up or down, uh, this will be one. Or whether we're pressing left or right, this will be one. So if any of these values are greater than zero, that'll be what controls our speed. So our as long as if, if we're not pressing vertical or not pressing horizontal, it'll be zero. But otherwise, our speed will be above zero and we know in our animator we're setting that to mean our player is walking so let's save this go back into the game let it compile and then we'll hit play and now when we start running our player starts running around, around with us so perfect as long as we're holding up this looks really good and our player can run along like that we can stop running we can jump like this but if we start pressing sideways or backwards suddenly this little animation uh, and our player doesn't really look great the player we could probably do with our player facing in different directions so that's what we're going to take a look at doing in the next episode is making it so that our player can actually move around within the world in a more logical way now that we have our animations actually set up to show what we're doing so thanks for watching this episode i will be back soon with more 3D platformer goodness where we're going to learn how to make our player face in different directions while we keep our camera pointed the same way. Thanks for watching and I'll be back soon with more tutorial action and gaming goodness.